Starting? Yep. I want to say good afternoon to everyone and uh, welcome to what is the first Sunday pitch session for Tad Hack Global. It's happening in Brisbane, Australia. It's where GMT Plus 10, we get to go first. I know we're being watched at the moment in Singapore and Kuala Lumpur. I think there's some folks in Russia paying attention. Um, we've had a great weekend here in Brisbane. Um, we've got six teams and one remote entry to pitch through this afternoon. Um, we do. We are going to try and keep to a pretty tight schedule, so we're going to go first. We, I guess we're going to get started pretty quickly. Um, and the first team to pitch is LifeSpark. Let's go. All right, thanks, Mark. Uh, yeah, so I'm Brendan Bigger. Uh, I've worked with uh, my colleagues Darren, Sergio, and Chris on an app called LifeSpark. Uh, the concept of LifeSpark, you'll actually see the uh, app in uh, a demo in a moment. We've recorded a demo for you guys to watch. Obviously, we'll leverage the Cisco Spark API for uh, video calling capability. What we wanted to do was to allow somebody at the scene of a, an accident or an incident to be able to uh, have a video call with emergency services, start that call instantly um, without having to log in, uh, provide account credentials or anything, just hit one green button uh, and be on a video call with them. Uh, of course, uh, bandwidth for video is not available in all areas, so we all also have to include the capability to do a voice call. Uh, and some of the things that might uh, be available through the app would be to allow somebody to you know, visually assess the condition of the, the patient, the person in the accident, uh, they could potentially assist and help somebody triage uh, that victim. Uh, and then they can also assess, you know, are there any dangers in the area as the uh, emergency response services uh, drive there to attend. Uh, and then also to be able to continue monitoring the health of that patient as, uh, as they wait for the ambulance services to get there uh, to assist physically. So with that, I'm going to jump straight into the demo. Services, how about I take a call? Yeah, hi, uh, my co worker of mine, Carlos, he's just collapsed. Okay, uh, if you remain calm, I'm just going to uh, gather some information before we uh, dispatch an ambulance. Uh, what's the location you're at? Uh, 340 Adelaide Street. Uh, you're obviously with the patient now? Yes. Male or female? Male. Okay, I've gone ahead and dispatched an ambulance for you. Uh, that's on route right now. Um, just stay with us, we're going to try and look you through the situation here. Um, just before we get started, are you able to uh, confirm if you've got the uh, Life Spark app on your smartphone? No, no, I should have downloaded it yesterday. On the top right, you should see an icon of a video. Yep. Top of the camera, there should be a little button on the screen there that allows you to use the other camera. Terrific. Okay, I can see the patient there. Oh, okay, it does look serious. Um, okay, first thing we need, we're, like we're going to need to do is uh, perform CPR on the patient. You know the CPR? Really, I, I did a long time ago. Uh, what I want you to do is uh, to approach the patient. Yep. Very good acting, as you can see. Now, uh, what you need to do is, is clasp your hands together in the CPR position. No, no not quite. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, share with you the position. You should see this come through. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, a lot better. Okay. So now if you put, uh, put that on uh, the patient's chest. Middle. Uh, no, 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 a bit higher. A little bit higher towards that's the yeah, perfect. Uh, 
going to the same and we're doing it looks like they are doing a good job they start a cpr that should keep the patient alive until we get there <laughs> as you can see, the quality of the video, um, as well as the ability to share information both ways, really uh, allow us to assist that victim at the scene before the ambulance services arrive. So, thank you for your time. Well done, great team. That's a great first pitch. Um, I think next we have the team, the phony team. Um, well, not phony, they're right here. Um, we'll a few minutes to get uh, a second to get, 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 get uh, Plugged in. Um, it's been a great weekend here. This is obviously the time where we get to cheer and clap and applaud for everyone. So I hope you're all going to enjoy the rest of the pictures this afternoon. Um, and as soon as we're done, I want to introduce you to Roscoe and Ben from Team Phony. And my name is Ben, and this is Roscoe, and we're Team Phony. Phony is an anonymous calling app with instant access. So anywhere you can load up a web page or a browser, your mobile or any computer, you can access a phone. Um, so with this phone, essentially we've leveraged the Cisco Spark API behind the scenes to um, do our calling and connecting users together. You can see here that I actually have the app open on my phone here. Can you switch to the yeah. room one? Yeah, <laughs> All right, so we're actually going to show you here behind the scenes. Um, so how the app actually works is just regular phone looks pretty much exactly like an Android or iOS phone. Um, you just type in a number. It doesn't actually have to be a phone number. It's just any unique identifier for your room, and you press call. And you can see the behind the scenes just now. We have a new room created. And now the first user here is able to create that room. And you get a unique identifying link. And that link you're now able to send to another user. And they can connect to your room and initiate an audio voice chat. So um, if you want a closer look at what that looked like, uh, it's not on the screen. Entering a unique number and then calling. And that's as far as we've got. Yeah. So unfortunately, we don't have the um, audio call working as such. Um, but if we did, essentially, as soon as that call was initiated and another user connects to the same number as you, um, you'd end up with a linked audio call that you're able to uh, chat over. Um, yeah, that's essentially the basis of the app. Uh, that's phony. Thanks for listening. Um, I think Jamin's next. Yeah. With Buspot. This is nice and quick and snappy, so let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say that for the other two. You got some condensed with it. No, you're right. Do you have a second to get plugged in? I hope the folks on the other side are watching us and enjoying their, I guess, lunchtime up in, uh, nearly lunchtime up in uh, KL in Singapore. Um, and I know they'll be pitching a little bit later on today, so we'll dial back in and see them, I guess. Yep. <laughs> it's done the silly thing again. Give me a second. All right, this is where I just get to um, ad hoc while we've had some video uh, resolution issues. Um, has everyone had a good weekend? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had uh, burritos yesterday and pizzas today. We've certainly eaten well. You can see a crowd. Uh, in the other stream, you can see there's a crowd uh, here. A um, few ring-ins. Louis bought some mates. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> the, 
the that's junior that, members. That, that's Tad Hack 2020. <laughs> <laughs> That's looking better. Please welcome, Jamie. All right, I'm today going to be presenting Boss Spot. Um, basically, it allows you to get the right info when you need it. Um, the basic, yeah, so it lets you quickly access specific bus departure times on your most favorite and most used uh, bus routes. So why? If anyone's around from Brisbane, they know that the TransLink app sucks. It's terrible, it's slow, and it takes ages to find the time. Generally, when you want to open it, you want to find one specific time really quick, and you want to know how fast you have to run. It's terrible UX, and it's slow and painful to use. Um, I've created this bot called BusBot. It uses the Cisco Spark uh, service. So you can chat to it during the day, basically before you're about to leave, or on the mo or on the clients on your phone, or anywhere like that. And you can basically um, you open it up before you leave, before you close the first part of the day. You ask the bus for a uh, bus time tabling question, and then you run to the bus that tells you how late you're going to be. Before I go into that, I'll quickly give you a live demo. If I can get Chrome to open, right? <laughs> so. Um, I can see a bit of testing here, but one example, I'll see if I can make it bigger. <laughs> my mouse is gone. All right. So let's say I am leaving the Maya Centre, the Queen Street Mall, uh, sorry, coming home from uni. So I'm going to go to Marty Hill bus station. So I go, what time will the 200 bus hill, uh, oops, you spell that right, going outbound? And I can't see the screen. Okay, yep. So once you send that a message, the bus bot will hopefully reply. It's been, the internet's been really laggy here. Um, <laughs> and it's not replying. Use <laughs> a question mark. No, nah, no, nah, you shouldn't need it. It does natural language processing, which means it works all that out magically by itself. Oh, it's because the internet's dropped out and it's killed the client. Sorry. Um, all right, I'll give this another try. I've just been plagued with Wi-Fi issues today. You can see that's hit that API, so I should get a response in a second. Ah, oh, I couldn't find anything. Okay. <laughs> Let's try one of these ones. I know works. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's annoying. <laughs> there we go. Hey. Hey. <laughs> So really, I'll go really quick run through. So what it does is when you send a message, the Cisco client, the Cisco Spark sends a message to my server, and then my server contacts the TransLink servers, and then it pulls real-time information, so it will even tell you when the bus is going to be late, um, or if it's going to be there a little bit early, um, or if it's cancelled, or anything like that. And say so you're going to miss the first one, it also gives you the second one, um, or you can send, ask it a few other different things and stuff like that. Um, I'll see if I can get another one to work. Um, let's go, when will... The bus leave, um, let's say 200 bus leave from Queen Street going inbound. That's probably silly because we're already inbound. But it should look it up and then it'll say the Queen Street bus stop, it'll leave at next one at 226. Um, that's pretty much bus stop. Well done. Well done, Jamin and Buspot. Um, while we get the next team set up, which is Kendrick, who's going to present uh, Parrot Bot in that sequence of bots, uh, I just want to quickly introduce uh, Bernie Woodcroft from iLab Accelerator here in Brisbane, who's going to be our judge this afternoon. Um, uh, Bernie has very strategically not seen any of the work that's gone into this. So, um, <laughs> 
Can I put it on this? Is that, that going to close it down? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Please welcome Kendrick and Parapod. Uh, hey, I'm Kendrick, I'm from QT Code uh, Network, and I made Parapod, which leverages um, Cisco Spark API to communicate with a drone. And I'll do it, I'm trying to do a live demo right now. So it's connected to the drone five minutes ago. I don't know if it dropped out, it might have dropped out, but we can test <laughs> if it should reply. Did it pop? Sweet, okay. <laughs> And so there's like commands which you can command a drone to do. And so you can type like slash fly, should fly, I hope so. Oh. send a message, a webhook um, pings my server, which um, commands the, the control to turn. And those are just pre-built commands. Um, yeah, any questions? <laughs> you didn't do a flip. Oh, a flip. Yeah. Well, I, I, I could, but yeah. yeah. Three minutes, man. Well done. Well done. Um, for anyone remotely who's been following the streams, you might have seen we've had some fun with some hardware. The Parrot bot's certainly been a big part of that. Uh, but there's also been a, uh, a race car circuit on a ping pong table in the room next door. Um, and that's been a lot of fun over the last 48 hours. Um, I'm now going to present Team Hashtag Red, if you're going to tell us what <laughs> they've done with it. Please welcome the team. Oh. <laughs> That's all good. Welcome, guys. Well, what we've had here this weekend is an environment which is, yeah, it's a, basically a, 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 car, a car racing kit. And uh, what we've been doing is looking at the communications between the cars and um, and the iPads that run it. And what we've also looked at doing is grabbing some of the feed that we've been uh, running with that data and using some. Uh, evaluating the actual, uh, looking at how we can integrate some of the different um, data feeds in, what's happening, and then do certain things and special things with it. So currently, yep. um, you're looking at me. You're looking at me. I am. Hi so, guys. So we've got back a slide. So what we try to represent through all of this is that telecommunications is probably a concept, but then the, the way that we communicate as people, as objects, um, things, those cars out there, it should be all ubiquitous and it shouldn't necessarily be tied to any medium or any construct, so whether it's copper or fiber or, or whatnot. So what we're showing here is a whole bunch of different mediums all coming together um, to create a whole user experience for what's there. So, um, Part of this, as part of some, we've got a, a demo kit that we do as part of our work, which is the Anki Overdrive demos, which is the cars, and we have Pi, uh, a, pop, a Raspberry Pi, listening to the, using Bluetooth, sniffing the traffic. Um, what we have done is actually extended that into more into, into the Tatag space. So we've actually used Tropo 
as part of one of the scenarios, but we've also linked use um, some of the integration technologies to do social media. Um, obviously, have fun and execute. So what we've done is actually on the cars, and what we've got in red is pretty much what we've got out of the box as part of our existing demo. So the car comes along on the racetrack, it smashes somewhere, so Patrick does a good job of turning them over. All the information is being captured by the Bluetooth sniffers. What we are doing a little bit differently is actually then bringing this back into the Oracle Cloud to actually do some analysis and actually kick off a, what we do is a, is a workflow process. So the workflow itself is actually doing a couple of things. Um, on one channel, it's doing some business rules. So we've got some phone numbers hooked in. And then from those phone numbers, we're calling into the Tropo uh, web API to actually kick that off and call someone, hey, your car's come off the track. So some basic telephony type communication there. And what we have done also is integrated that with LinkedIn. So before uh, anyone shoves any uh, bad stuff in there, I've actually got a workflow process in here that um, stops people from doing bad things to my LinkedIn account. So that's always <laughs> the safest thing. Approval process that then in integrates that back and puts it up as my status update. So there has been a couple of times I've been testing last night and this morning. Anyone's on my link LinkedIn. Um, they will have seen some updates about NK Overdrive being, being pushed up through there. So that's pretty much our solution that we've sort of put together. So um, I'm, I'm not going to go through this too much, but around some of the uh, really simple UIs to actually get in there do all this stuff. Um, here's one of those forms. <laughs> that's me, my LinkedIn update. So proving what goes out and Patrick and the things pop up magically in there. So whether it's that, Facebook, Google Chat, calendars, then it doesn't really matter. So the last bit is we use Tropo in the back end um, through an explosive use of the Node, Node.js as the web API, which allowed us to do a lot of the other integrations that we wanted to do on the other side. So there's the Tropo call at the bottom saying, a your car guardian has been detected coming off the track. We've got a bit of a movie of what's there. Just a quick snapshot of it all in action. So we are getting some telemetry from the from the cars themselves. There's the car going off the track. Professional hand person. <laughs> this is actually now picking up the event. <laughs> cool. Well done, Patrick and Jason. And Louis. And Louis. And Louis. All right, uh, as the guys get set up for chit chat, um, this has been one of the ones that's been uh, lots of fun for us over the weekend. <laughs> um, I'm going to encourage them to uh, get. Can I just. Uh, it's been great to have you guys here. Um, I just want to welcome uh, Lookman and, and Nitin. Thank you. Yes, um, you've, you've done the taco burrito dance quite a bit this weekend as well. Let <laughs> <laughs> you, we'll you guys sit up and then we'll talk about chit chat. Yes, thank you. Hello, <laughs> 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 
Oh. In your hand? Mm -hmm. That's actually mine. That's tight. Someone actually had a camera on. Oh. Oh, this is very cool. We're out. Shall we start? Yep. yep. Please yep. welcome Chit Chat. Hey guys, uh, Nathan, Luke, we met here at the TED Hack yesterday and came in without an idea of what to do. And as we were chatting about the possible things, we realized that something we all do at least once a day, hopefully, is go to the loop. And there's not a whole lot of much that you can do while you're in there. And we thought, you know what? These guys have this brilliant thing of random anonymous chat. Let's try and see if we can bring those two together. And this is what we've come up with. So you enter a public toilet or a toilet that is equipped with the chit chat application device. Uh, you can also log in using an app or just call in using any phone at any point in time. But depending on where you're calling in from, it identifies you as part of a basket. It basically, you sit down in the public loop, it detects that you've sat down, there's a pressure sensor right now, and it asks you, Hey, welcome to Chit Chat. What would you like to do? Would you like to have some fun by yourself? Or <laughs> would you like to participate in a conversation with another shooter? And once you've answered in a yes or a no or any kind of voice, the voice recognition and the NLP will pick that up and then put you into either trivia questions that can be answered in yes, no, or true or false, depending on where you are, or if you're just uh, interested in chatting with somebody else, then, well, you can chat. I'll call in to the demo. So let me call in first. All right. So we get the sound on. So <laughs> we go on to the technical demo. So at the minute, what we've done is that we had haven't had the whole prototype working. What we have is from the phone, you can call a public number and it bring you to this uh, server, this chit chat service, and we bring you in a conference with a random person, so that's what we have achieved this weekend. And um, so I call right now, I'm connected to my Bluetooth speaker. T-T-T-T, welcome to chit chat. Do you want to chat with the random person who is in the toilet? Yes. Of course. You will now be in the room, 11 waiting for another person to E-N-T-E-N-R the toilet. Here we go. And this is me dialing. Welcome to Chit Chat. Do you want to chat with the random person who is in the toilet? Yes. You are now in the room. Eleven with another user in the toilet. Hello. So hello. I'm just gonna stop here because the echo kind of confirms that the sorry. The echo sort of confirms that there's a two way audio happening. So of course we are in the same room and we are using PSTN. The potential for this is it could be everywhere. Luke is now going to go into a little bit more about what's the technology we've tried to leverage or learn a little bit more about in trying to sort of make this work. So yeah, so we have used uh, the Tropo API connected to a Node.js server. So basically what we do is our phone calls uh, the, Tropo, the Tropo API and uh, the Tropo API is just controlled by our Node.js. So we have a lot of flexibilities and we can actually do whatever we want with the Tropo API. So at the minute, what we do is every time a user call in, we check if there is a room available, there is a conference available with one user. If there is one, then the user enters this conference. If there is not, we just create new conference. Like we can have a thousand conference at the same time because we have this random number. What we could add as well is a trivia bit after that. And any kind of possibilities now we can evolve that we have this not just server connected. And I will let Nitin present you like what are the possibilities of things that we, we, we thought about and where so, this is going. So while this, when we came in, we were looking at the sponsors and the possibilities of the sponsors brought to the table for the first time. And obviously the idea behind building this application was to try and identify if we could pick up a little bit and learn a little bit about some of these sponsors. We happen to pick Tropo, but I think we've seen that we could use Spark to do this as well. We can see value in using other 
uh, sponsor provide I mean, services as well. But in terms of use cases and applications, I think uh, people in this room quite uh, got into the conversation for the humor of it. And a lot of things developed from that, right? So we potentially look at this as a service that people can subscribe to and say, hey, you know what? We are an NGO that works with children, and we would like a separate room for ourselves. So any NGO across the globe can dial into that, and they can randomly chat within that specific group of being NGOs. If it's a <clears throat> public event, like a game or a concert uh, or a music festival that you've gone to, the trivia can be tailored to that event. So you, you kind of learn as you answer yes, no, true, false sort of questions, helps promote the event, helps you participate a little bit more, makes the whole process a little bit more enjoyable uh, or less conscious, for lack of a thing. Uh, I'd like to turn things back to Luke to sort of introduce yeah, us and I thank everybody. I for just want to add like help. one of the possibilities that we thought about as well, which was that like the elderly persons that are alone at home, they could have this device and start talking to anyone as as soon as they want someone connected, random, and they start having someone with them. So I want to thank you everyone for first welcoming us here and uh, letting us have a bit of fun with the technology. Thank you. And again, a great team. Um, they met roughly 24 hours ago. And uh, I, I, we've seen an array of hardware. We've, we've had a lot of laughs um, and lots of fun. Um, thanks, guys. Well done. That's the end of the six that are here. We have one more. Um, John Lyons has been playing along at home and has uh, contributed uh, as part of Tad Hack Australia and has uh, sent through his video. Um, Alan Quayle, if you're watching, it's also in the correct places you should have it. We thought it's a good video. We thought we'd play it. And, and John particularly has taken advantage of one of the sponsors, uh, Para4, and grabbed their data set and done some cool things with it. So our last presentation of the afternoon, please uh, welcome via video, John Lyons. It's gone awfully dark. It has. And quiet. Do you want to go to the... Um... Are you plugged in? Yeah. That is my screen. <laughs> okay. Do you want to go to the um, YouTube? Yeah. This is why you always have a backup. Interesting to see that YouTube is the backup. Yeah. <laughs> oh. um, is the audio somewhere? Yeah. I was testing it before. <laughs> oh, there you go. All right. It's called Shared Sock Shopping List. It used some of this fantastic data that Cara 4 supermarkets released. Uh, at least one gigabyte of data of people's uh, shopping habits. So I downloaded this data and I extracted all the products that were listed in that data and gave them an integer reference. Um, and I extracted all the lists of items that were in there. So this is what someone has bought, what all these items together at once. And this will let me, let me do some analysis on that to see what products align with other products. And then we finally come up with this data where we can go through each product and we can see what other products are most likely to be bought with it. So it is product number eight. We can see um, 10 people when they buy product number eight, also buy product number 41. So this is a bit confusing to use. So from this, I created an iPhone application called Shared Shopping List, which lets people create their own shopping lists and they invite other people to view those shopping lists and add items to them. Um, that's great for a couple or Anybody who wants to share a shopping list. So let's create a new list. Give it a name. Now on this list, now we can start adding items. So I'm going to add an item, and we can see by order, but I'm pulling in that data that Caracol, that what is data that Caracol gave us um, to help people 
the side that they need. And we're going to add that into our shopping list. And using that other data that we've calculated, we can see these are the most common items that other people have bought as well. So we'll pick one of those. And then I'll we'll add something else. And we can see once again, we can see uh, 744 people or so bought this one. Um, but it's very easy to share that shopping list. I'll show that. So to share someone's list, you just send them a nice looking email. It looks like this. Click on the link. And that's I think to download that list. Here you can see the entries the other person has created. So very easy to use app. Nothing like it out there. And uh, uses that great character on that. So I'm John Lawrence, and this is Shared Shopping List. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, everyone. Who, uh, so we've, we've uh, I, get, I guess before we sort of close off the judge and make some decisions, um, I just want to thank again uh, everyone of you for participating, giving up, giving up a hunk of your weekend to basically learn and play in the telecommunications world. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, there was pizza outside. There was drinks outside. Um, huge thanks to the folks, respectively, from both Oracle and Cisco, particularly Jason Lowe, who pulled an awful lot of this together. Yeah, so we're going to end the, we're going to end the uh, broadcast stream of the judging now. Um, Chip and Craig up in uh, Singapore and KL, respectively. Um, see you guys next week. Have a, everyone else who's watching from Tad Hack around the world. Hope you enjoy your days today, and uh, hope you have as much fun as we've had. Thanks very much. Go Tad Hack.